Welcome to Cooperville. Do you know what's fun to do in Cooperville? Pack up your shit and get the fuck out. Listen. www.welcometocooperville.com Who the fuck says www anymore? I can't even say it. www. Stop that. The Welcome to Cooperville podcast. On demand anywhere quality podcasts are available. And some places where cheap podcasts are available. And the local gas station has some. Subscribe. Get updates. Feel better about your life. Welcome to Cooperville.com. Welcome to Cooperville. Make sure you use a coaster. The wife gets upset when we leave rings on the tables. You know, I never thought the day would come when we would get the band back together. I started in radio back in 1999. I barely, by the skin of my teeth, graduated high school and moved down to Madison, started in radio, and was working part-time. The glorious shift, the, uh, what, Saturday, like, I think I started midnight till 6, and then did, like, 6 to noon. Big time. It was a big-time gig. Uh, moved back up, uh, back home to Eau Claire, and started on, a, it was the mothership, the big stick, the tallest tower this side of the Mississippi. Doing overnights, uh, doing Sunday night country classics when the Sunday night country classic girl was ill. And then all of a sudden, the afternoon guy said, hey, I've always wanted a producer. So we went in and we talked to the program director at the time and pitched him this idea of the afternoon show being sort of morning show like and having this producer character who would be on the show. And uh, and the program director said, well, we're not going to pay him. But if he wants to come in, and at the time I was working, I think I was not only working overnights uh, on the country station, I was also selling shoes at J.C. JCPenney, uh, to which I told J.C. JCPenney, um, I'm sorry, I can't work in two to seven because I have to go and do this unpaid afternoon radio show, which was at the time the Tommy Shaw radio program. Not to confuse anybody, it is not Tommy Shaw from Styx. But if we tag Tommy Shaw, I'm hoping we get some more downloads of the podcast. Probably not. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. No, I've actually uh, Googled myself, Tommy Shaw, several times. And, and damn you, sticks! He's still got uh, 15 million more uh, pages on me. Now, you, uh, you had to scroll quite a bit down. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I had to add my middle initial just to break up the monotony. Which yeah. is what? What is what is the middle initial? Uh, C. F-ing? F-ing? C. Not no, F. Okay. C, as in... Uh, as in, uh, uh, oh, oh, I can say stuff on you this. Can. Is podcast, yeah, this is podcast, no. I was gonna dude. say, I was gonna edit myself. I'm you like, wait a second, to. I'm There's not, gonna, no I'm not gonna get sued. No, no, no. Well, you, well, you might by <laughs> sticks, but that's, that's I, I did have the, the, the pleasure of, uh, uh, I'll come back to the radio thing in a second, but since we're talking about Tommy Shaw from Sticks, I did have the pleasure of meeting Tommy, uh, face to face at, uh, Country Jam, uh, when Sticks came to town. And uh, 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 John Murphy, who was uh, the promotions director at the time, uh, said, I dare you to swap uh, driver's licenses <laughs> with him and just to see what he says. <laughs> so we got into some banter and Tommy's a great guy. I mean, he was just he was just awesome. And I was a little starstruck, obviously. And uh, and then I, I, I was joking. I, I mentioned Dennis DeYoung, which apparently, I guess, was frowned upon. Mm. And, uh, and uh, so there ended the uh, the interview right there. <laughs> and uh, I can't be within 50 yards of their tour bus anymore. Well... So. You know, you live, we all make we all make mistakes. You, you live know, you know, and you learn. Yeah, you know. don't don't do that. I think to this day you still shouldn't probably do that. <laughs> no, but it was such a it was such a cool um, thing to be able to bring you on board, and and I know that you weren't paid, and I was so selfish because <laughs> I so badly wanted a morning show style afternoon show. Mm. And uh, I I listened to what you were doing on the other stations and what you just your personality in general, and I'm like this could be fun, this could be a lot of fun, and I got to tell you, Cooper, um, for every job that I applied for, um, you were a part of my air checks because uh, <laughs> there was there were so many bits that we had that I could not not put it in. Um, you were, you were electric. I feel like I should get some money here. Like there should be like some checks should come in. I mean, I know you brought like a twelve pack and some some additions to the uh, uh, Cooperville Cave down here, 
But uh, you know, if you were if you you know got employment based off of obviously the oh I didn't genius. say I, I didn't say I got hired. <laughs> I just applied. <laughs> what are you nuts? Yeah, I suck. Yeah, there's no no one in their right mind's gonna hire an overweight forty something year old guy. Has been forget it. And this is why I'm at Cooperville Podcast. For, I mean. Thank you for having me. Yeah, welcome Appreciate to welcome to, <laughs> welcome to thirty eight years old. Yeah, and this twenty is, years in, and, and this is what you have to look forward to. Okay. Yeah. Hey, life goals, man. The, the the beer belly and the gray hair and everything comes. I mean, even my voice has changed since the last time I was on the radio. And I'm excited. I have things to look forward to because I can say fuck now, and I don't even care. <laughs> I don't even give a fuck. I okay. actually, I actually, you know, I was so cautious when I was in radio about uh, offending anybody, you know, because we we're. In but a you had to be, especially because you were on a, on a family friendly. We format. were, yeah. It, it was very family driven. It was, it was golly gee willikers type of thing, and it I was care- hokey as fuck, is what it was. Dude. <laughs> it was, I was, I was, I was so prim and proper when I was out in the in the streets, and and there was one time, one time where I was hosting, not hosting, I was uh, a guest for McCann Donuts their anniversary party uh in menominee and uh alex edwards who obviously does mornings uh can i name drop no <laughs> it's not gonna get you a check oh god yeah damn it I all know. right but anyway uh alex edwards was was hosting it when he was at b95 and and apparently jake leinenkugel um dropped out and i found this when i was there jake leinenkugel dropped out I was the emergency backup guy. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I was the guy that he called up because he needed to fill a slot. Okay. So, <clears throat> so I was the last guy to go. I they put me uh, in this back room where no one can see me, and it's an open bar, and I'm there for like an hour and a half, bored to shit, and I'm drinking. Obviously, well, I got nothing else to do. It's radio. So by the time they call me up to do this, I was I was uh, in the bag. I was <laughs> I was feeling no pain. And so I'm just going to I'm going to go out and I'm going to roast these guys because it was a roast, you know. And uh, so I get up on the podium and I'm I, Pat Kreitlow from 13 was there and a bunch of other big wigs from from town were there. And important people, important They're people, right. bigger, important people on, on television, bigger incomes than mine. So I get up and I'm like, you know, hey, McCann Donuts, hey, you cocksuckers, you suck, you fuck the shit, motherfucker. And I saw about. Half the room turned fifteen shades of white, <laughs> and then I I heard later that a, that a, a young gal walked up. I can't remember who she was talking to, but she walked up and she goes, "I didn't think Tommy swore. <laughs> I didn't think it was in his DNA." <laughs> I'm just like, I'm sorry, but I'm drunk and I'm bored and I'm human and and I'm the I'm the filling guy. I'm, I'm I'm embarrassed because I had to fill a slot. Yeah, Jake Lyndon Kugel does not swear. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> he doesn't. No, he was kind of, it was Former it, Marine. It was yeah. kind of it was kind of, kind of a funny story, but uh, um, it, it was it was kind of blushing uh, to some of these people because you know when you're in radio, they 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 think that you're you're they picture you a certain way. You know, and you live a certain way. It's like, well, I'm like anybody else. I stub my toe. I'm gonna curse. You yeah. know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let them fly. You have children. You're gonna curse. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Um, you meant mine. That's <laughs> fun. He's I gonna go it. to MIT, by the way. He is. He's. Yeah. He, he's. We've had uh, multiple people. Some of them family, and I, f- I figure they're just being nice to us. Like, <laughs> he's really smart. You should get him tested. I'm like, we've had him tested, but not for that. It's different <laughs> stuff. No, I, 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 I spend- no, he's. Within he's two fine. minutes of meeting your kid, he's he's like pulling electrical equipment apart and putting them back together. And I'm like, uh, I got a washer that's on the fritz. You want to come over to my house and do something about that? <laughs> I'm worried about him taking apart like the like the washing machine or something and turning it into some sort of a spaceship. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, Dad, do you know if they sell the flux capacitor at Menards, <laughs> or if that's something we have to get on eBay? Which I'm is, sure Walmart's got it. Well, it, strangely enough, he found one on eBay, and I had to explain to him that <laughs> it's not real. The, the, no, I didn't say it wasn't real. I said the toughest part about having a flux capacitor is without, you know, Mister Fusion, there's no way to make it work. And if That's Doc right. Brown isn't around, and and Marty, um, he's r- a little rougher on the edges these days. So you got you know, you kind of got to. I'm going to have to do it yourself. Yeah, it helps if you got Mr. Fusion. It really does. Uh, you, you, know, you can throw the banana peel in there. You know, it's, it's really weird. And I just, I just thought about this right now as I said that. In every episode of this podcast, somehow I've referenced fucking Back to the Future. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, this you is wanna, the movie that influenced my life. If you want a true, true story, and Cooper, this is, I, this is dead honest. I'm not making this up. Um, Michael J. Fox is a relative of mine. 
Uh, no, see, you're already, yeah, there's no, okay, fine, okay, mm. tell me the story, yeah. Mr. Shaw, come yeah. on. No, out he with, really is. Out he, with it. <clears throat> nope, he's, uh, he is a distant, co- I'm going to say distant cousin. He's not like, hey, we go to family reunions together. Uh-uh. He's a distant cousin, but he's on my, my mother's mother's side. Uh, they came from Canada, um, and hey. I don't know exactly their side connection, but uh, a walker, who was my grandmother's maiden name married um michael j fox's dad mom what the uh, grandpa something something or another anyway regardless we're related have you ever reached out have you ever like tweeted at him or sent him a postcard uh a couple different times um i was <laughs> no met avail. With, I, I was i was met with uh with uh <clears throat> restraining orders well yeah. but uh, I digress. I mean, it's there's a know. difference between a postcard when you mail it and a postcard when you drop it off at their house in yeah, your pants. yeah. It's apparently, they frown on that. Yeah, so it, it, it's uh, Canada. What can you do? You, you know, know, they legalize marijuana. You know, good for them. Yeah, the bullshit stamp cost me fifteen dollars and ninety cents. <laughs> uh, but no, it's, it's a true story. I I actually had to go back to my mom several different times and say, tell me the story again because I'm trying to connect the dots myself. And because uh, you, you want to name drop, uh, exactly. You know, cool. And I, I, I did make the mistake of telling my kids one time, especially Jasmine. I told her one time, I said, "Hey, you know, hey, this is kind of cool." I said, "We're distant relatives of Michael J. Fox," and of course, she wanted to know the story. My mother told her the story. I tried to listen, but I think I was drinking again. Um, but uh, <laughs> reoccurring <laughs> themes, people. It's reoccurring <laughs> themes on the show here. So, I, you know, not thinking what she would do the next day at school. So, you know, Cooper, what did she do the very next day at school? Oh, she name dropped, dude. Absolutely. Coach name dropped. Absolutely. I'm related to Michael J. Fox, people. She came home, and this is the funniest thing. She came home with this, uh, she was white in the face, and she looked like she was crying. And she goes, Dad, you're a liar. (laughs) I'm like, what did I lie about, Michael J. Fox? All my friends said that that's a lie. I said, oh, my God, you didn't. Oh, well, Dad, you're the one who said... And I'm like, yeah, that was. I'm sorry. I should have uh, prefaced that by saying that's just between us. <laughs> this is a you and me thing. Because you will be stuffed into lockers, and uh, yeah, I feel bad about that. But no, it, it is a true story. It's kind of cool. I don't ever talk about it. it. Is you know, I've never met the guy. Don't know where he lives. Um, but, <laughs> so don't uh, ask. So don't ask. So don't like yeah. search up Tommy on Insta and be like, hey. I heard you and Michael J are close. That's You're right. Tight. Your brother, your brother's from another mother. I'm in his will. No, uh, but yeah, it's kind of a cool story. So I want to go back to first getting into radio because I, I spent a lot of time I think in the last two months looking back at what was two decades of my life, and I, I did two decades of my life in radio, and I took two days to get over it, and then I got on with it. Because I can still talk on my podcast. That's right. That's, <laughs> still, that's right. I can still hear myself in headphones. You have control. I can't. I have the con, <laughs> bitches. I have the con. But you know, I, I remember um, even as a little kid, and a lot of I've, even my wife has told me this story about you know listening to the radio and recording it on cassette tape, and then you know trying to play DJ and talking out of songs and stuff. What was like your first? What was your first dose of the drug? When you first, who who gave you the gateway into being like? Here's something that you should try because this is what all the cool kids are doing. This is going to get you chicks. I could probably do an impersonation of the guy that really, really uh, turned my life on to radio. <clears throat> Ready? I'm, I'm prepared. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Before you do your, I'm going to need one of these. Yeah. So my. Okay. Hold on. Oh, by the way, did I mention that uh, Cooperville podcast being brought to you in part by Goose Island, Next Ghost IPA? They're not cash sponsors, but we're just hoping for a free beer. Actually, now I am going to send that. That's two name drops. So I'm going to send that <laughs> an invoice for this fucking thing. All right. Next Coast IPA, by the way. That's what we're thinking <laughs> So um, anyway, it was uh, I was in high school um, and I was in band. Go figure. I was a band geek. OK, clarify. In band or in a band? No, no, I was in band. Okay, High thank you. Band. There's I wasn't. The, it's it's one. It's one vowel that changes that from. <laughs> I was in a band. Okay, to let me I, let me let me let me geek out even more. I was in marching band. Well, you know. Yeah, okay, well you got to start. Keep someplace. the rhythm. That's right. So we were invited to uh, to march at the Minnesota State Fair, mm-hmm. and uh, so we went to Minnesota State Fair, and after we did our marching stuff and got all of our stuff put away, uh, I made a beeline um, for the KDWB boombox. And, you know, that was obviously the music we listened to. And I uh, was just enamored with the radio station. And there was a guy on the radio. <clears throat> and uh, uh, <laughs> there's a deeper story to this, too, by the way, which I'll share a little bit later. But anyway, so I'm watching this guy, and he had a crowd, a sea, a sea of people. 
you know, just all eyes are on this guy. And this guy was electric, absolutely electric. He could do no wrong. And he was 101.3 KDWB. It's, it's, uh, oh, I can't even, oh, what did he say? No, it's 101.3 KDWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWW
so that was kind of like my, my, my gateway into it. And then, like I said, doing it as a kid, you know, talking in and out of songs. And, I, you know, if I was a DJ, I wouldn't talk over that intro because, man, he didn't, you know, he like totally went over his first vocal. Um, which is hitting the post, which you know, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> which I learned like 15 years later, like, Oh my God, like I knew what I was talking about. Um, <laughs> kind of, but literally barely finished high school. I didn't have any direction in life. And I was like, Oh, so I DJ weddings on the weekends or, you know, dances or whatever. Um, got an opportunity, um, with music in motion, which is a, a, a company that was in Eau Claire, but based out of lacrosse and had in station, you know, had outfits all over the place. So, um, for some dumb fucking reason, to this day, I'm, I'm twofold pissed. I'm twofold pissed at them and twofold pissed at myself for like being 18, barely graduating high school, have been working for them for three years or so. And they're like, we have an idea. Let's move you to Madison and have you be the manager of the market. I'm like, yeah, this is a great fucking idea. I'm going to I'm going to make millions. Oh, man. I'm gonna yeah. like you're gonna have your own office. You're gonna have your own business cards, and I'm like, oh shit, you're gonna. But have here's it. the thing: we need you to pay for the office. Yeah. We need you yeah. to pay for the business cards. We- yeah, but it, it turned out <laughs> I did pay for the business cards. I, t- I think, but it, it turned out um, like my office was a broom closet. Like literally, at one point, it was a fucking broom closet. It was that's my closet because this is where I keep my. my this is my <laughs> studio, also where my clothes are kept. Um, so I went down there and. You know, 18. No, just, I don't know, my, my eyeballs are big. And, like, oh, I have this office, and it's a broom closet. But whatever, it's cool. It was smaller than that. Like, you could fit, like, a half of a desk and a computer, and the cords had, like, run out of it because there was no outlets in the fucking thing. Like, what? Yeah, you had to steal electricity you really from the neighbor. Uh, you really can't <laughs> shut the door all the way because not that you could fit another person in here, but if you could. Um, but it happened, that, that office happened to be, in uh, the same buildings as what I think at the time was Cumulus, uh, Cumulus Radio, eventually ended up being um, Clear Channel, which then eventually ended up being iHeart. So I'm 18, fresh off the boat <laughs> in Madison. You know, Eau Claire is, you know, what, 250,000 people in the metro. Go down to Madison, state capital, uh, university, you know, go Badgers, nice hat. Thank you. <laughs> It wasn't a culture shock. I was just like, okay, I need to find fucking somebody and like, a, like, hey, 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 you're going to be my friend because I'm going to probably die here, like homeless and alone <laughs> on State Street, like trying to get into a bar or something. You know, it's, it's going to be bad. But it happened to be that, that it was in that building and they had at the time an alternative station. It was uh, Mad Radio 92.1 in Madison and made it friends with a couple. There was a couple of the part timers. And the night guy, it's always the night guy. And then I was like, you know, I'm doing this wedding shit on the weekend, which was horrible. God, I I applaud you for like leaving radio and going into that business because if I will never deal with another bride <laughs> in my like I love yeah. I I love my wife to the core. But if something would ever happen, I am never getting married because I don't even want to deal with another bride that I would marry. Yeah. <laughs> like, sorry, that shit ain't happening. No. It, it's it's a different world. It, it's I, an absolute different world. And when you're on, I think, you know, maybe it's, you know, it's obviously it's different when you're, you know, a part of that, that fabric of, oh, we're getting married and then whatever she wants, it's fine. Um, but to deal with, uh, yeah, no, yeah. not doing it. That's <clears throat> why yeah, I got sick um, of that, that fucking arena. And I'm like, you know, it'd be cool if, you know, I'm watching, I'm sitting in these guys, you know, watching these guys in the studio and I'm like, yeah, this is fun. It's, you know, and I, they're like, Hey, can I, is it cool if I come to like one of your events? And they, you know, obviously the alternative station, they did a lot of bar events, did a lot of concerts. Um, and I was like, yeah, yeah, this is like, this is my thing. Like, what do I need to do? And they're like, well, you have two options. You can either go to MMI Madison Media Institute and learn about radio, and it's whatever nine thousand dollars a semester. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I make nine thousand dollars a year. <laughs> so this um, is going to be a challenge. And I'm guessing, and they told me right off the bat, so I should have known better before I started. Like, it is going to take you probably nine years to pay back that nine thousand. Absolutely, absolutely. But they're like, or, or you could just like learn how the buttons work and. And I did, and I learned, you know, how the system worked, and I learned. Obviously, we had a, a better appreciation for the music, and ended up getting a part-time gig with the station and doing. Like I said, it started at mid. It was midnight till uh, six on Saturdays, and then six a.m. till you know noon on on Saturdays at, at some point. But I was in the building, 
So if like the midday girl was gone, the PD was like, hey, you know, you know how to press the buttons. You go in. You, go in, you, warm yeah, body, uh, come here. Uh, what's your name? <laughs> uh, you're the guy. Yeah, We're like just going to go ahead and call you Skippy. Yeah, okay. I'm not even, I think Chris Sugar was my name at the time. I think it was. Not even alive. I think it was. Oh my God, run. Yeah. And so I, you know, I, I ended up being the fill in guy. Well, that ended up taking over like when I was supposed to be talking to br- bitchy brides about, you know, don't play the fucking Macarena or whatever song at my wedding. I was like, uh, t- I'm sorry, you haven't reached me right now because I am away from my desk. Because I was upstairs in the studio, you know, filling in for the midday girl or just in the studio sure. watching the morning show and stuff. You got a better gig on the so, horizon. So I got I got shit canned from the mobile DJ stuff. Darn it. And I remember my uh, the the general manager of the radio stations at the time, Jeff Tyler, called me into his office. And he was like, you know, we we have a contract with uh, Music in Motion, the company that you know, DJs, and they, they were able it's a weird contract to uh, understand how the – ins and outs of it they allow us or we allow them to put our logo on their banners and we advertise our stuff and he's like so you know we understand that you were let go from this position um we still would like to keep you on i was like great you know i'll do radio i'll leave this job it was more than nine it was probably like eleven thousand dollars a year i was making radio wasn't quite paying that much working part-time on one day a week and then filling in so I ended up moving into a house with a couple of, uh, of the other radio guys that were there on the outside of Madison and Verona, which was this li- like the last, like, I don't know how we got this house. It was the last house in town. Like it was country all the way out. And there was like a business next to us and we just drank and partied and, oh, we got to go to work and talk on the radio and go to Nine Inch Nails concerts and all this other stuff. <laughs> so I, I still ended up having the keys to the music in motion building where they kept all the equipment. Oh, boy. So, like, on random Thursdays, knowing that they needed the stuff mostly Fridays and you know, Fridays and Saturdays. So, on random Thursdays, we would just go and <laughs> take the equipment, <laughs> bring it back to the house, and have, like, these fucking, you know. <laughs> which Rangers. It, it wasn't. It, it was because, I mean, obviously, we had, like, the big speakers and, you know, the big, like, 400-pound PVs that you had to, like, have three people to, like, let's get this up here. <laughs> but, and, you know, all the tapes, they, 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 were, they could queue up automatically. It was great. <laughs> and the three light bars that, that bolted into the side yeah, of the speaker. Yep, I know the, them well. The good yeah. stuff, the quality. Oh, the quality yeah. Stuff. Mm-hmm. So at one point, they uh, uh, it was it was a weird like a weird week happened um, right about 2000. We've been doing this for a while, a couple months, and I, I was drunk most of it. And, <laughs> I don't which, remember much. I don't, I don't know what different for now. I, I, dude, can you uh, yeah, throw me another one of those? Oh, um, go- I'll goose, be more than happy goose to. Goose Island, uh, we thank you for your fake sponsorship of this podcast but they kept on oh, we kept on partying we kept on taking the stuff like i said every thursday and my gm gracias uh eventually came he came to me again he's like hey come up to my office really quick and i was like he's like um hey i know that you're just working for us now but um the uh there's a new manager with music in motion and he's wondering if you have a key to the storage place where they keep the stuff i'm like i have it somewhere me uh, habla no inglés uh, yeah but <laughs> oh, i guess we'll have to find it's it it's right know. next to the thing i last lost they had apparently started um because when you have like there was probably 10 systems in this building and they were all set up exactly the same way a tote with the ro- the cords and shit in yep. it all wrapped up one way and the speakers went this way and the you know the box went on top of it and they had apparently changed the way they set them up so I, we just kept on going back dropping it off you know on you know middle of, you know friday mornings before anybody would be there and we just set up the same way you know not paying attention to the other 11 setups that were in there well they started like changing the way they put their equipment back and there's one system that always seems to be put <laughs> in the same uh in the old way of doing things back when you were the manager i'm like I don't know if I'm cue the csi crime scene theme song please mike uh, i'm like yeah you know what we we've, we've we've used it yeah sorry and he's like i'm sorry all right well um i'll let them know and we'll we'll see what happens and I was, like I said, I was 19, I think, at that time. Um, and that weekend, it was weird. It's a weird story. That weekend, we we probably partied or something. Um, and I w- went to bed and passed out, whatever. I mean, it's, you know, potato, potato. Yeah. And I remember this huge fucking stroke of lightning. Just bam! And it, I to this day, remember hearing it. I remember, like, waking up in bed and going, like, that was really weird. 
Uh, my grandfather had been sick for the better part of that last year. And me being 18 and an asshole, never went back up and saw him. Um, I, I, he was like the, the matriarch of the family. Big, brooding, loud, Irish motherfucker. <laughs> and so I was, you know, and I, I think I, I, I use that to the, to today to say like, you know, I didn't go back because I didn't want to see him. I was just, an, I was 19 and an asshole. Yeah. Like, I don't know, whatever. You're, you're pretty selfish when you're that, yeah. when they're that young. And then, you know, you're almost 40 and you're like, eh, I probably should have done that. But, um, so I got a call the next day, um, from my dad and he was like, uh, I don't know. He left a, a message on our voicemail, on our voicemail, not voice. I wasn't voice. Uh, what was it called? Uh, was it a beeper? No, you know, <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't dealing drugs, man. I couldn't afford a beeper, nor could I afford drugs. It was a lose, lose situation. We just had to take a lot of Tylenol. That's, that's all we had to take. Crush it up. It'll be fine. No, it doesn't make it any better. Work faster. But no, when you actually had uh, an answering machine, that's the answering machine that was attached to a phone that actually came into your house. Kids in the day, no, uh, left a a message on our answering machine that was like, your grandfather passed away. Uh, So I I called him back and and he was like, yeah, there was a huge stroke of lightning in Eau Claire. I mean, three and a half hours away. And I was like, that's really weird. There was a huge stroke of lightning down here. So I go back up for the funeral, see my family probably for the first time in in two years or a year and a half. And... I was like, okay, I am a disaster at life, and at, at you know, nineteen, um, I'm gonna come back home, uh, you know, making five bucks an hour doing part time radio. Yeah. Um, I, I think I tried to build house trusses for like a couple of weeks, and I was like, I can't do that. Yeah. This is really hard work. <laughs> I can't do this. I'm a diva. Uh, so I moved back up here, and I was again started at J.C. Penney, and my grandmother came in, and as I was living with with her at the time, uh, when I moved back up, and she was like, "I found this in the newspaper. It's a job opening uh, for overnight at Wax, and Wax had been when I was growing up. That's the station we listened to to find out if fucking school was closed, right, right, every single day. Yep. And I was like, oh, you know, you know, country's not really my thing. I mean, Garth, and then everybody else." George. Um, but I, you know, I think once, once it gets into your blood, you're like, I'm like, damn, yeah, I don't, I'm fucking selling shoes at JC Penny, you uh-huh. know? And the only reason I'm doing that is there's a really hot chick that works in shoes <laughs> at JC Penny and there happened to be an opening and I happened to be here like, Oh, Oh, I guess I could work with her. She also, uh, works part time over at Victoria's secret. I just want to let <laughs> you know that. And, uh, <clears throat> now I know where she makes more money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not anymore, but back in two thousand, back, back in the day, back in two thousand, yeah. if you but made six fifty an hour, you were rich. <laughs> you were, uh, they don't call them tips. I think then it's a different, it's a different thing. And that's sugar daddy. It's weird. It's <laughs> but no, I mean, started at Wax, and and that's that's how you know Tommy and I ended up you know crossing paths is at that at that juncture, and then two thousand is when I started. Yeah, because I was I wasn't twenty one yet, mm. obviously because I wasn't drinking. Enough. <laughs> You were such law, a nice boy. Law abiding. You son. were such a nice boy. And it was weird. Uh, George House, who was you know the program director at the time. Yeah, I know. Um, but I, I remember going into my interview, and I was still like an asshole. Bleach blonde hair, mm-hmm. both ears pierced. Oh, yeah. Just like. You weren't as tatted up, though. So no, you, I you had a any. shot. I did. You had yeah. a shot. You were still pretty clean. Like, I bet you that will eventually that will <laughs> fucking grow out, right? You know? And. <laughs> like oh, I'm sure it will. Yeah, I'm sure it will. And the earrings they can just pop out, right? That's fine. But that was uh, that was the start of it. And then, you know, was on wax for a year. And a lot of that time spent doing afternoons with you. Um, we the company started a new station, which I was pissed that I didn't get a job for because it was rock. And so I, but the guy who was on the top forty station moved to the rock station. I moved to from doing overnights to doing afternoons, afternoons to doing afternoons on the rock station for seven years. They blow torch that station when we get bought by a new company kind of live out the dream for a while. But I think the toughest part, and I want to, I want to, you know, get back on, on topic with you about, about the exit from radio and life after it, because there was the day I walked in February 4th, 2019, because this will be archived forever because it's a fucking podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's not radio. It doesn't die after it's live. And just so you know, your attorney can come back and use it against you in the event that, uh, you know, anything yeah. pops up. You can come after all the money I'm making doing this. <laughs> you can. Take it all. <laughs> I think I have it in a change jar somewhere over there. <laughs> but it's, um, 
you know, I remember walking in that day and it was just a normal day and it was, uh, went in and it was one of the 2000 fucking snow days that we had this year at school, uh, with my kid and, oh, we're, we're letting the kids out early because there's a snowstorm coming. And it was the start of like, a, it was the yeah, beginning of February. It's when the shit storm happened the whole month and went and picked my kid up from school, brought him home, was having something to eat with my wife. And the general manager texts me and is like, Hey, are you in the building? I'm like, no, I'm just picked up my kid up from school. I'm just at home quick. I'll be right back. Coming to the office when you get back. I'm like, oh, this is when I get my raise. Yeah. Finally. Right. Make more than five dollars an hour <laughs> after twenty years. <laughs> and walked in and, and our, our new ops guy was there. And I'm like, that's weird. You only work on Tuesdays. I'm not sure what you're doing here on a fucking Monday. Mm, it's interesting. A, I know. It's a good gig if you can get it. Dun dun dun. <laughs> We're parting ways today. I'm like, ha ha ha. No, really. No, really. You're, you're funny. Oh, oh, oh! You got that serious look on your face. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a joke. Yep. Like, all right. Well, uh, yeah. I guess I can go back to selling shoes. Oh, no. is JC Penny still in the mall? <laughs> is it still there? Please, God, tell me it's still there. <laughs> is that chick still working there? No, I don't want to know. No, <laughs> no, no. Like, no, yeah. She went to. She went into TV. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. It, there's nothing fun about. Um, now this is this is me today. Um, and and I'm I'm gonna try to say this as cautiously as possible. Um, there's nothing fun about radio. Okay, no. there isn't. Now, as I back up, I will say that radio is still in my blood. Mm-hmm. Okay, like we were talking about before. the The problem with radio is that it is such a, and I don't want to use the word corrupt business, but it's flirting with it. The consolidation process with a lot of these radio stations over the years has created the need to um, eliminate the personality Mm -hmm. uh, where everything is now driven by voice tracks, where you got a guy in Ohio, and I got a good friend in Ohio. He and I used to work together in Minneapolis. He is a uh, probably one of the best uh, on-air personalities that I know of that have survived consolidation, and he's one of the guys that actually does uh, voice track other markets. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm going to name drop him because I uh, love the guy. His name is Joe Boxer, works for WCOL in uh, Columbus, Ohio. And uh, he uh, will voice track different uh, stations in the east, uh, the, the mid-states. Uh, I think he's even got some, uh, I, think he, I think he's got some gigs down south as well. But anyway, <clears throat> that's consolidation. Yep. And a lot of people lose their jobs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never um, understood how... Uh, these radio uh, companies, I, I guess I do. I, I get that you know money makes the world go round. Unfortunately, when you take good talent out of the workplace, it it uh, it destroys the art of radio. Right. Um, I I come from a very theatrical family, and and um, you know my my sister and mother own a dance studio, and and uh, you know I love theater. Um, I love radio. I love the arts. Uh, and I think it was just a really good fit for me uh, right. to be in radio, but um, unfortunately, <laughs> and I, I still get a little heated when when we bring stuff up like this because um, so many times when I was behind the microphone, even at Wax, um, there was a there was a way that I knew how to connect with the listener, yeah. as I'm sure you know. Yeah. You, you just you connect with your audience. Um, I was taught at a very very early age. Um, uh, when I first started radio, um, Michael Knight, KDWB, pulled me aside one day. He goes, I want you to always put the listener on the pedestal, and I want you to put yourself down here. I said, you lift your audience up, you connect, you find out what their interests are, and you concentrate on that. Never put them down, always put them up. And I lived by that yeah. um, throughout my entire career. <laughs> and the consolidation companies really took the personality away and have have not done justice to the art of radio. Mm. Uh, now you got some guy who's never stepped foot in Eau Claire talking about Eau Claire businesses, talking about Eau Claire weather, talking about, you know, who are you kidding, dude? Right. You know, you you're you're right now you're broadcasting from Austin, Texas. Uh, Where it's not fucking snowing, <laughs> right. by the way. Right. It, it, that, that irritates me because right. um, it, it, to me it's a lie. Um, yep. I've had a lot of lot of uh, moral issues in, in radio um, uh, to boot, and uh, where I didn't agree with the program director, I didn't agree with the philosophy. Uh, what I wanted to do um, was to, um, well, first and foremost, you know, ratings. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wanted, I wanted my listenership to be large. I wanted, um, to be able to be a voice in the community. Not only was I just buying the microphone for four, four, four or five hours a day, but I was also in the market. I was doing things for American Cancer Society. I was right. doing stuff for uh, UCP. I was, I mean, I wanted to be a part of the community. And then th that's what we should be doing. You know, when it's a, it's something that we um, almost have an obligation to, to be in the market and to um, be a part of the organizations that make the town a lot better. Right. And and so I feel like radio is really starting. I mean, radio stations, in their defense, they do do a lot of great community service programs, um, but they truly don't utilize the talents that uh, that they can. Um, you know, and I'm not saying this because you're in front of me. I'm not saying this because uh, you've got me on your show and uh, – but uh, you were, were a, you are a fabulous talent. Uh, you are. You've grown tremendously from the time I met you to today. Uh, there was a time I was listening to um, your station, and I didn't even know it was you. I had no clue. I mean, you you have evolved that much and have have grown that much in the art. Uh, I was extraordinarily impressed with with where you've you've come, and for them to cut you uh, makes me think there is not a single soul survivable in the industry uh i still have a lot of friends that yeah. uh that, that work in the biz um i got a lot of friends that, that are in, in top top 10 markets in the country and and um those are the those are the guys that kind of have survived consolidation like i was talking about before and they're the lucky ones right but they still have to travel they still have to pack up and go uh, i got a friend that was at z100 new york that left the number one market to move to denver because it's more family friendly you know, you don't have to take the subway to work. You, and he's you know? a stoner. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> it's, Clearly. It's legal. Yeah, it's yeah. legal in Colorado. It's, well, it's soon. <laughs> soon, my friends. Soon. But I admire I admire great talent. I really, really do. I think that's one of my weaknesses is that when I see good talent, um, it, it breaks my heart when they have to work so hard and struggle so hard to practice their craft. Um, mm. It really does. And uh, um, I had to get out. Um there were a couple of different reasons. My ex-wife was one. Uh, we won't get into that uh, that big turmoil. I've I've met her. I met her years ago. <laughs> She's still banned from the uh, Wax One Hundred Four area. But anyway, um, uh, I was burnt out. Uh, yeah. To be honest with you, I mean, there were to put it to put it. I guess you know, uh, to be as transparent as I can. I was growing up. Um, which I know it sounds really dumb, but I, I was, I was right. like, there's only so much I can do, um, for wax. There's only so much I can do for radio. Um, and I got to be honest, there was times where, and by no means am I saying that I'm Tom Cruise or Tim McGraw, but I mean, I did get tired of being stopped at these big box stores when I'm buying toilet paper and light bulbs and people stopping me saying, do you have concert tickets you can give me? <laughs> yeah, it, it did take a, it took, it took a toll. Yeah. And you know what the best part is about that is not like if you've met that person before, not having a fucking clue who they are. They're like, hey, what's up, man? Hey, yeah. dude, dude, fucking love what you're doing. It's, I gotta, uh, like, hey, guy, dude, hey, man, bro, dude, hey, homie, dude, gee, funk, slice. I got to tell you, this, this was actually, I was telling my daughter this the other day because we were talking about um, Country Jam and, and she wants to go this year. And uh, th this is a true story, funny story. And I'm not, I'm not, again, I am, I'm humble. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm like God's greatest gift to radio. I'm not, trust me. He's not Tom McGraw. No, uh, but a friend of mine, uh, we, we scored tickets back in 2009. And um, we uh, said, hey, let's go make a weekend of it. So we went down to Country Jam. And uh, this would have been, uh, 2009 i retired from wax in 2003 uh so six years later mm -hmm. um i come back and we enter the gate there's a few people that were security guards that recognized me uh and just keep in mind at the time i didn't live in eau claire uh, i was yeah. living uh, closer to the twin cities and uh so they were they came to me and said hey tommy how's it going blah 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 and then somebody else heard it and they're like you tommy shaw and then all of a sudden, somebody next to her said, that's from Wax? That's Tommy Shaw? Before I knew it, I had a crowd of people at the gate that were asking for my autograph. And my buddy was looking at me. He's just shaking his head because he's thinking he's going to have this really nice, fun time where we can go just get all boozed up and whatever and have a good time. And he looks at me. He goes, dude, I'll catch up with you later. Yeah, I'll see you. 
<laughs> I'll see you after Tim McGraw's <laughs> done. <laughs> you fuck. And, and I just, I honestly, I was tickled to death. But that was a prime example of why um, I really, truly wanted to get out of radio. You know, I just wanted something easy. I wanted a a regular nine to five job. Uh, you know, I love the anonymity of of just you know. Um, Doing something else, right? You know, not not being in the in the public eye or or anything like that. And it was it was uh, it ran its course, um, and uh, I found it got a great job now. I love my job, love the people I'm with, and and uh, um, got a great family, um, and uh, I, I couldn't ask for more. You know, radio is it's such a funny because it evolves and it and it needs to. I think in the same light, I was about. Well, in my early early stages, I was in radio because it was some sort of it was a spotlight, and maybe that's only child syndrome. I don't know. I'll tell you when my kid gets older and he needs to have attention all the time. But it was it was a thing I knew that I could articulate at some points, not after four or five next coast IPAs from Goose Island. <laughs> but you know, I I knew I could do it, and I remember my first uh, when I had my first gig in Madison, living with a couple of the guys that were in radio, and they were like part-timers you know they were working on the weekends and stuff and they're like well like well, ours sounds so different than yours like you can like flow from the song into saying you know getting that station id in there you know philo first in last out all that other bullshit you know so it, it went from that wanting to be a pseudo celebrity wanting to have some sort of notoriety um and that and a part of that growing up process going from just doing radio to doing radio, doing bar events. God, when I worked at, at the carp forever, it was, I'm surprised that we're all still alive. I'm not, <laughs> I heard stories. Was, I heard shit stories. Was wild, man. It was, just, it was, just, it was, yeah, God, yeah, God, we could have a whole podcast on that fucking seven years of disaster. <laughs> it's a true E Hollywood yeah. story. I mean, I mean, we, I don't think anybody signed a waiver, so we could, but we probably yeah. shouldn't. Because everybody's now like approaching forty. That's like, right. Don't fucking bring that shit up, man. No, no, I wasn't in we the can't. calendar. No, I don't want to talk about. It. No, it's fuck that shit. Twenty two days of Harley, um, but it it evolved when I, when I got my PD stripes when we started the X, which was five years ago, uh, October of of two thousand and eighteen. I was at a point where I'm like I. Obviously, didn't want to do typical rock radio bar events like, "Hey, we're at, we're at uh, the pickle every Thursday. Come on down. It's Buck Bottle Night. Let's get all fucked up, and Friday's gonna suck anyway." Because literally, if <laughs> that's I, actually a good promo. If I, gotta... I, yeah, no, <laughs> I'm available for hire. We check the website. <laughs> but I mean, I, I if I did that, like that would not only shoot my Friday to hell, like my whole weekend would be like, I'm still recovering from going out on Thursday. That's right. <laughs> I was out past nine. So maybe it was a, it was a little self-serving. Mm. But, you know, I got to a point, I think, um, you know, when it started and I was, you know, mid-30s, I, had, I was married, I have a son. I wanted to do something different, but I didn't want to leave radio. So I think getting that opportunity to take um, a classic rock station and, you know, with, with encouragement, uh, from me pushing management to change it to an active rock station, knowing that audience, understanding what it could do. You know, the first thing we developed with that station was Project X, which was our our charitable umbrella for the station. You know, the, the music and stuff, it, it will find its place. The imaging and stuff, it will find its place. The We'll figure that out. That's that's not my, my issue. My issue is let's develop something that, knowing what a hard sell rock radio can be, let's develop something that is that not only takes my passions and my cares and my causes and things that I care about and can put them in the limelight, but knowing my audience and knowing the listeners, something that they care about, they can get behind and this, thus gravitate towards the right, station. Right. So we developed Project X, and the first thing that we did is we you know we we developed this golf outing, you know, um, the X Open, which is on your uh, not stolen because I worked there at the time uh, bottle opener right now that you have over there, <laughs> so you don't cut your finger off. <laughs> Because I wanted, I'm like, let's let's do stuff that makes a difference. Let's not be, and I and I I don't want to throw the mothership under the table, but I'm, I I got to a point in radio where I was so fucking sick and tired of jumping on the bandwagon of somebody else's stuff. Yeah, I'm yep. like, you yep. know what? It, it's the the stuff that all these organizations do, and and I get that radio has a piece and a part of that. You know, we can be the the voice of. Um, of an event or of an organization that's trying to do good things. Um, but I'm like, you know, we have this, 
this ultimate power, this not power, maybe, maybe that's a little strong, but we can, we have the ability, especially in passion formats, country, it developed over the years. Yeah, country is number one in, in passion listenership. Which is just, and, and, and I think that, you know, where country is now is, is, is so different than when it was back in the early 2000s. Right. Even in the 90s, it's, it's, just, it's ridiculous now. But rock radio has double-edged sword because it has a stigma and at the same time, it also has this passion-driven audience that will go out and do things. And when you have that, that understanding, you can drive people to do things that they wouldn't do. Yeah, Things that salespeople, management, can't quite comprehend. That they're like, wait a minute, we're used to going and selling a car dealership, a remote a, a live broadcast. Um, we're going to tell them to have hot dogs, and because Tommy Shaw is there, because X Y Z personality is there, people will come out. They're not going to buy a fucking car, but they're going to come out. So what you know what that was was free enticement and this thought process that we need to make this as easy as possible as you can for the listener. How can you get them to come out? Okay, uh, give them free food. Uh, and and you know people that will come bring their fucking 10 kids out. They're like, guess what? We got lunch today. Yeah. Free, hot, free hot dogs at Eau Claire Ford. Come on out. It's going to be great. And that, that actually happened on my watch. I watched it. It was like watching uh, a circus car, a clown car pull up. Literally, it was uh, not even the size of a Yugo. It was smaller than that. And a family of 17 literally came out with Tupperware to a car dealership. <laughs> yeah. While I was there doing a remote, they filled up on all the free food, got back in their their kit car, and, yeah. and drove home. Uh I could hear the music, you know, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. It was bizarre. Yeah. And and I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And you're talking about a lifestyle. You're talking about um, with your rock listeners, it's a lifestyle. Country yeah. music, it's a lifestyle. You know, the one thing between country music and top 40, uh, when you're talking, you know, country CHR, you're talking about two listeners, listenerships that actually go back and forth. Yeah. Because you know, we're talking about new country, which is today. Oh God! I, I don't even know. <laughs> even there's know so what's much. There's so much crossover that uh, top forty and country are literally one in the same. Mm -hmm. Now that could be good. That could be bad. I'm not going to argue that point. But uh, when you do talk about the the station promotions and you talk about the things that you do d week after week, month after month, year after year, it's the same thing over and over again. It's the monotony. It's the does anybody have a fucking brain where we can come up with something different that's going to make an impact? Right. Now, I'm not talking about, um, you know, uh, snow biz, U UCP. I'm not talking about uh, the heartfelt, um, the, the, the charitable like organization. That absolutely. Yeah. That stuff it should be a staple. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about things that take a promotions director. If I and I was a promotions director at one point, And I, you got to think out, outside of the box. You, you know, all the things that we do are so stale. Yep. Uh, what is going to move your listener to get them off their chair, get up, get them off their ass and take action on something that you want them to be at and participate in because it's a big deal. Uh, it, it is tough. It's not easy because right. there's only so many things you can do uh, and there's only so many people you can partner up with. So what is it? I don't know, but think about it. <sighs> Letting my blood go back down. <laughs> You better because your finger's about oh to explode. Okay. Bloody. Uh, PTSD. We, we were we were uh, we were showing off PTSD. the fact that not not the reason we got married, but part of the benefit of being married is when you wear a ring <laughs> on your finger. Uh, when you have a non twist off cap, you you do have at all times with you the capabilities of opening up a a, a beer bottle, and sometimes it slips and it, 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 it goes you, awry it, it works for everybody other than tommy shaw because I, I did slice my finger like during halfway through the podcast i'm like why is my finger so sticky oh yeah there, it's bleeding <laughs> there you go and, then, and i have a child i'm not sure it's uh, everything's in there. <laughs> no but, but no, I, you know I, but back to the story yeah. is is that you know um uh, there's a lot of great things that radio stations do uh, in the community. So I'm n never once will I ever badmouth what they do because they, they do a good job at what they do. Um, but I do believe that um, there's other things that you could be thinking outside of the box, mm -hmm. even when it comes to training your air staff, uh, which is something that I did not get when I was still in radio. 
Uh, I got it in Minneapolis. Right. Uh, you had people hovering over you 24-7, giving you air checks, giving you coaching, giving you advice, giving you uh, ways to get better, getting yourself outside your comfort zone, because that's truly, in my opinion, the only way that you're ever going to grow. Right. Um, and that happened when I was in market number 16. Here in, in Eau Claire, it's a little bit different. It's please show up for work on time. Yeah. That's what it is. It's please don't be late. Yeah, and we're um, going to need you here, here, and here, and here if you could be there. And if you can lift over 50 pounds, that would be great. <laughs> and, yeah, and yeah. so it, it's it's a, it's one of those things where if you're in a market this size, um, uh, you really have to uh, be diligent and take things upon yourself. And you, you want to be better. You want to do better. Give uh, give your superiors ideas. Uh, give your, your potential clients ideas, make it their idea so they come to the station and go, hey, I want to do this. Right. Um, but I, I truly believe that it's our obligation as on-air personalities uh, to be the voice of the community and to, and to be the voice of people that, um, that need help, that need uh, food, that needs assistance, that needs clothes, that needs... Uh, that is something that I truly, truly embraced. I love doing that kind yeah. of stuff because it made a difference and it made me, when I went home at night, it made me smile. Yeah. There is a... And i 100% on board with that. I think you... There's a point in your career in radio that you get, you under, you understand that you understand the impact you can make just because you have a voice that's, that's recognizable and because you say things that they like and they play the songs they like you, when you reach that, uh, that level with your audience and that, um, that connection, you know, that you can, you know, drive people to do and help and be a part of things. And whether that's just spreading the word for somebody else's event or creating your own, you know, where, where my, lid flipped a couple times I think is we would develop these ideas and, and and when I got the stripes the PD stripes which you know everybody's fucking driving oh my god you're a PD now I'm like oh great my business card says something else um, <laughs> but it, it does especially now um, <laughs> for hire uh, <laughs> freelance is what it fucking says bitches but there you know when I got and, and it's so weird because I I don't think that that my situation happens very often. Is I was given really the keys to to start not my own radio station. I don't take ownership of it because it's copyrighted and all that stuff. I created property is what they call it mm. because all my shit still <laughs> lives over there. Right. But I was really given the keys in 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 a in a market in an area and with management that didn't understand a format to create. Uh, to build a brand, to build a entity that didn't exist before. We had a rock station before, but it was completely a, a completely different mentality than what I was when I was at the point that I got those keys. Than when, when I was at working for it back in you know the mid two thousands. This came from a, a, a more mature standpoint. It came from an understanding of a little self serving because I didn't I didn't want to do the bar nights. It came from an understanding of we have an opportunity here to put something on the air that super serves an audience that's been deprived of not only their music, but their attitude, but their, how they want people to talk to them. They don't want how that it, it's going to come up and Hey, 25 in a row, 37 in a row, 400 in a row. And Oh my God. And hey, don't forget after the phone report, we're going to have this. Hey, uh, it, 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 it had such a, like, this is how I talked on the radio because this is how I talk right, as a right, normal human being. Right. Because people didn't want to be yelled at, and we gave them everything they wanted. We gave them the music that they wanted, and and we were able to create these movements of people to say, not only are we going to have an event, we want you to come to our event. We want you to pay to come to our event. We want you to pay while you're at our event. We want you to give us your money at this event because all of this money that we're going to capture here is going to go to this cause. It's going to go to veterans. It's going to go to our canine unit. It's going to go to our police department. Mm -hmm. It's going to go to this camp for kids with cancer. So we were able to just, you know, and that audience, I think the two audiences in, in country and in rock, those are the two audiences that are passionate enough about not only their format, their music, their lifestyle, but are willing to go and say, you know, yeah, I'm going to go do that. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go and be a part of this because not only do, and, 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 and it's and it's when it's put on by radio and it's put on by idiots like you and I. Right. <laughs> you know it's going to be fun. You know there's going to be a hole that's got bacon on it, a hole that's got shots on it, a hole that's got you know a football launcher on it. It's you know when you're at a golf outing like that. When I had some time to reflect on my career in radio, 
I went back and looked at the last five years uh, because the the previous fifteen before that, it was the ebbs and flows. It was the carp era, which I remember little of, and it was you know working with you at Wax, and it was my start. The middle, you know, the the times in between at stations that weren't impactful, I was like, well, I, I got to talk on the radio, and it was cool. And, but when I looked back to the last five years and the station that I got to build the brand, when I got to help create the logo and, and build the website and 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 come up with ideas and promotions and hey, we should do this and write the liners and write the promos and, and really have, you know, almost full creative control of what we were doing. I looked back and I said, man, we're, we're putting on, for example, our, our golf outing, the X Open, grew immensely over five years. And we got to a point last year where I was finally allowed, I'm not sure if I passed some sort of test, like, oh, not, now you get to see budgets and revenues and what, what money's coming in. And I saw what the company was making in revenue mm -hmm. on what we did and what we were actually able to raise and give to the charity. Because we, we didn't put it on. We didn't. Yes, we cared about making money. We were like, yeah, well, here's some sponsorships. But here's what we, here's what we want Mike Star Market to be there. It's because we want them to give us bacon so we can give bacon at, at, at whole nine. You know, it's going to be on. <laughs> it's fucking bacon. <laughs> I'm playing for Who doesn't bacon. come for a golf outing and they're like, free bacon? Fuck, I'm in, dude. Whatever. I don't even care. I don't even care. You throw eggs on that bad boy and I'm, uh, oh my God. But we weren't we weren't going out like going, hey, we just want you to put your name on this. We're like, we want you to be a, a, a partner in what we're trying to do because we are trying to for the And that's, ex cost. that's exactly the, the key word right there is partner. But then um, you look at, you know, when I get to look at the split and I'm like, fuck, we took the money we raised at the golf outing was something like twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars in one fucking day. Yep. And I saw that forty eight thousand dollars was made in revenue. Yeah. And then I knew that we had to take what we raised on that day and pay the golf course, and pay for the porta potty, and pay for the fucking because the station wasn't going to dip because they're profits, not going to yeah. take out of that fucking yeah. that revenue. Yeah. So all of a sudden, our 25 goes down to 15. Yeah. And we're like, you know, it, it, it got me to a point. And again, it got me at that moment. It's a moral it, issue. And I was like, I mm -hmm. I can't not do this event because this <laughs> event is hugely successful. Yeah. It's a staple of the radio station. Yeah. We're, we're the, we were one of the first radio stations when we started to be able to put on our own thing. We didn't jump on somebody else's thing. We were like... We're gonna do this. We're gonna figure out how. To, we're gonna. My wife came out. I mean, she was working. You know, every, everybody was a part of it. We can't not not donate fifteen thousand dollars to yeah. veteran charities or whatever the charity happened to be. But you can't tell me, and from the sales end of it, and from the business end of it, that somebody in that office isn't going. Like they they didn't. They, they, it wasn't a conscious thing. Like they weren't like, oh well, hey, you know. Uh, <laughs> we just want to make sure is we're, you know, I, I want you to know, and, and my GM had, had come in and printed me off like this fucking, I can't even know they made like, but not eight by 11 paper, but like the big ass fucking paper, like the big sheets. And I'm like, our printer doesn't even do that. Where did you get this giant paper from? Long spreadsheet of the ins and outs of radio. Like, here's what's in, here's what's out, here's what's in, here's. And I was like, okay, she's like, um, our, my, our numbers don't match up to what your donation is. Can you tell me where the, where the mistake is? I'm like, well, above my pay grade because you know what I make and it's shit <laughs> and math obviously because I don't make enough money but I was like the, I'm like well yeah because so the, we thought that you know out of this this was going to get paid for by this your this part, pot yeah. your part not of this pot this pot you're almost fifty thousand dollars invested in, you know that you made on this thing oh no well, that needs to come out of yours it, and it was I was like I, I, I can't understand people that know what we're doing, know the effort it takes. I mean, this is a this is a five six months of your work year is dedicated to this one thing because you know how impactful it is, right? Uh, on on what the station does, and it was like totally lost on other departments. And I'm like, I don't, I don't understand how you are like totally cool with that. Like, I had a sales rep come in at one point because uh, we do a motorcycle run that my my promotions director. Taylor, uh, who I, I love to death, love working with her. I loved growing her from a part-time personality um, on wax, because who didn't start there? God. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, to to somebody who really bled radio and 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 loved it and wanted to to create and do things. And like, oh, let's do a motorcycle run. She's into Harleys. I'm like, 
take it and run, girl. Take yeah. it and run. Yeah. You know, let me do, let me know what I can do to help. You know, so to have, you know, somebody come in, uh, a salesperson come in as we're you know promoting this to a, a Harley dealership, and the sales rep says, well, the the Harley dealer asked about their investment as a sponsor, and it was I'm, our arbitrary number. It was fifteen hundred bucks to be the one of the sponsors. And the, the dealer had asked, well, so this is my donation, and this, you know, this money goes to, to that. You would think it did, but it doesn't. No, no it doesn't. No, it, it goes, it go, it, and, and obviously it was played out. Well, no, this this actually mines your commercials, and this, but it it, that's what rubbed me the wrong way about when you're trying when you're trying to use your your power. And a diminishing power at that. And I understood that from for the last ten years. I'm like, this is not an, an entity that radio is now TV. Radio is now TV from the '70s and '80s. It is. It it's not gone. It's still there. I hear when I listen to radio. I hear commercials running. Well, you know that so and so ran a study that said that 52 percent of American households listen. Okay, I, I get that, but it it is it. Radio is the TV because the next thing is already here. Yes, that's right. That's right. When you, you know, can get every ounce of information, music, uh, TV, movies, uh, books, you name it, from your smartphone. and uh, not, not even your smartphone. Right now, all you have to do is ask. You can speak into your smart speaker. That's who, right. Who will remain nameless. Otherwise, she'll start gabbing <laughs> she and she'll take over the whole fucking show. <laughs> But it, that's right. That's right. All you have, to, and that is, I mean, you talk to any entrepreneur, any person who's, who's big in, into the game. You talk to, you know, listen to Gary Vaynerchuk. Or you listen to anybody that's out there. They're like, voice is the next. It's already here. All you really have to do in your car, and if you have a newer car or in your home, if you spent less than fifty dollars to have one in your home, all you have to do is ask for it now. Right. All you have to do is ask. I get the fact that radio is an introduction to music. It is a great discovery thing. How, I mean, you you can watch trends. Everybody, the, the classic hit stations who are, are very successful right now is a very hardcore, dedicated demographic because they don't want to ask. They just want what they want, and they're going to get it on, on that kind of format. If you're not in discovery right now, that's what radio is for. It's for discovery. If you're not discovering a new artist, a new song, all you have to do is ask for it. We we yeah. are literally five years, if not less, away from being able to have Amazon deliver you something in less than an hour. I mean, if you don't, if you if you are bypassing the, the theory that that is not going to happen, you are not living in the one day delivery world right. that the rest of America is living right. in because it will come to your door. Uh, we're on a toilet paper, and in ten minutes, that shit will be delivered to your fucking door if you by don't drone think, by drone. Yeah. The, the sh it's going to happen. Honey, TP's here. And, and, and an accident will happen. I mean, this is with the unmanned cars, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fucking drone through the windshield. Coming I, up tonight at 10, a I massive Amazon drone accident takes out 17 people. But it, if you don't believe in that world is going to exist and you're, you're holding to this world that did exist, you're going to be left behind because it is a world of discovery. It is a world of the fast and the future. It is a generation. I mean, Gen Z, my kid, who's nine, and and we've I've talked about this a lot. Is they don't care about how it used to be. The old uphill to uphill to school in snow both they're, ways. They're creating what they want things to be, and they have the full capability to do it. Yeah, at yeah. any time they want. That's sad. So you know what, what? I think I think radio will always have a place. I think it will have a a. A niche in a, in a, in markets, but we talk about consolidation. That's because ease and convenience. You want you want to have a personality who lives in you know is is doing big market live afternoons in a major market. Also heard in Boise, or in Eau Claire, or in Hudson, or in a market that's much smaller. It's as simple as download this program, and he will voice track for you for X amount of dollars. Exactly. That will save you, you know, from paying somebody. It's going to save you about seventy thousand dollars in an annual income is what it's going right. to save you plus benefits. Yeah, and I go back to where did radio go wrong back in the day? I can tell you where radio went wrong. I mean, there's nothing that we can do about innovation. There's nothing we can do no. about about smartphones or about uh, that little box by your corner that we're not not going to name. Um, 
and the ease of buying products and whatnot. But I can tell you one thing about radio is that when the when the companies took away the personality's mm-hmm. power to be a personality and to capture the audience that they are looking for, that's huge. That's right. absolutely huge. When we're reading liner cards and uh, we're not pushing ourselves to be better and we're not be, being the role models that we should be, uh, it, it, I, I was taught in, in Minneapolis. I worked for Bob 100 FM. It was a relatively new station, really whacked out radio station, even a whacked out program director. Um, <laughs> it I wasn't hate, me. It's I hated that. this guy with a passion. I hated this guy with a I don't hate people. I hated this guy. But let me tell you something. I respect this guy, and I'll tell you why. He taught me how to be a personality. Mm-hmm. He's the one that put me out of my comfort zone that no one else did. He's the guy that said, mm, no, you got a week to turn this around or you're unemployed. <laughs> okay. But this is my dream. You know, and, you know, we just moved back to Minneapolis and I'm freaking out. I'm like, you know, my ex-wife at the time didn't work. Not that she ever did. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, you know, and so I'm freaking out. And so I'm, I'm going to my I'm going to my um, my assistant PD, who was a sweetheart. And I said, what, what can I do? And he's giving me pointers. And I'm going to my other uh, fellow air personalities. I'm like, what, what, what are some things that I, I should be doing? And they would coach me. And I, I was never had that much pride to not go to somebody and go, help me. Uh, and um, I got to a point where I have reached the level that I should have been at hmm. three years prior. And um, I'll tell you what happened. And, and to this day, I'm so proud of this. Um, it was ratings time, and this was about maybe six months after this whole "get better or you're dead," um, <laughs> you know, discussion. Ratings came out. Arbitron, Minneapolis, my first Arbitron ratings uh, ever in Minneapolis. Um, and my program director, he was in his office, and he called the the PD hotline. And I'm like, Oh God, here we go. <laughs> this conversation's gonna suck. He heard my last bit. He didn't like it. I'm so fired. And uh, he called me up and he goes, Tommy, ratings just came in. And I'm like, do I want to hear it? He goes, well, I don't know. Why don't you tell me? And he just said it just like that. Why don't you tell me? And I'm like, shit. (laughs) And he goes, let me tell you something. Let me read you the ratings here, son. And I'm like, and I'm on the air, by the way. Okay, so I have to put on a good face after this conversation. So he tells me, he goes, all right, women, 2554. I don't know if you want to hear this or not. (sighs) You're number two. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. He goes, Tommy, you're number two. Number two, 2554. Okay, that's good. 1834. Yeah, 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 yeah. Number two. I'm like, okay. Go on. 12 plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number two. I'm like, are you trying to tell me that I'm the I'm the I'm the second top rated radio personality in Minneapolis? He goes, I'm gonna be over there in five minutes and you're gonna give me a hug. And I'm like, holy shit. Are you kidding me? He came busting through the doors, and he had his arms out. And remember, this is the guy that I wanted to see underneath a milk truck bleeding from his mouth, okay? He comes in, arms wide open, gives me a great big hug, and he goes, congratulations, son. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. (laughs) I'm going to live. I'm going to live. A a year later, we were all fired, and in comes uh, Howard Stern. (laughs) So. uh, yeah, that and that's the, that that's the nature of of the beast. That is that is that is radio. That is radio. You, yeah. you can't avoid it. But it was one of the happiest moments of my life. One of the most miserable moments of my life, and happiest moments of my life at the same time. You know, I did lose my job. It was one of the first times I got fired from radio. Luckily, um, I got fired twice in radio, and once was here in Eau Claire. Um, and uh, it, it was it was not a big deal because at the time I, I started a small little company called Shottown Productions. And I, I literally fucking went, name dropper. <laughs> I went from it no longer exists, but oh, I went from <laughs> I went from, you know, uh, a, a, an on air personality that I did, you know, m- most of my adult life. And I moved to where you were when you first started. Mm. Uh, but in a, in a different capacity. I mean, it was it was the the name that I acquired uh, over the years here in Eau Claire um, was my marketing tool. Yeah, and, it's a brand. And, and it, was, it was it yeah. did become a brand. And so um, I was very 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 fortunate um, to uh, had had a very successful five year run 
uh, with Shawtown. And just like radio, the burnout rate was tremendous. Ended up selling it uh, five years later, got out completely, and, and then started my new life, you know, outside of, the, of media and, and entertainment. Um, but, you know, when I, when I retired from WAX in 2003... Uh, my again, my good buddy from Minneapolis was was with me during my last show. Walking out to my car, um, I was actually on my way to a wedding uh, for Shaw Town, and uh, and uh, so I kind of had my head down. I was walking towards my car, and he looks at me and goes, "Dude, you all right? Dude, dude you all right? I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Bawling, absolutely. I'm just yeah. bawling. I'm like, oh my god, you don't understand the energy, emotion, passion that you put towards a craft." And then when it's done, it's like breaking up with your girlfriend. It's like ending a relationship. And and it was probably, um, you know, one of those moments where you're just like, I just, I want to crawl underneath a rock and stay there with a bottle of Jim Beam for just, you know, a few days. <laughs> Till it's gone, then I'm going to need another one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was uh, like, yeah. Moment, yeah. But, it, it, but, but hindsight being 2020 again, it was one of those situations where um, God put me on a path. Uh, to do something else and you know you don't see it then but you see it now and and to this day I thank my my lucky stars I thank God that he said Tom you're done yeah. you're done and just you know you got better things to do and, and and obviously it it everything from there on forward um, I ended my first marriage which was um, a, a big problem Thank you. Sorry, I was going to do a slow <laughs> clap, but I figured I may as well. <laughs> I was, was going to a full on <laughs> motherfucker. Uh, you're not, like, not you're like Dwayne Wade just retired. <laughs> hey! hey! Congratulations. <laughs> on to your next life, sir. Yeah, it's not uh, It's not one of those things where it's, you know, I mean, it's 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 problems. People yeah. have problems. They have issues. They have they have relationship issues. And and, and that can absorb every inch of, of spirit and energy that you have. And for 14 years, that spirit was slowly draining mm. and it, it it everything basically just came to a head and, and it's like i can't do this anymore and and um i pulled away from everything i pulled away from eau claire i pulled away from friends i pulled away from i just need done um mm. and uh, i showed up at i showed up at a, an event one time i wasn't hosting it but i was i just you know went to i think it was a cancer uh breast cancer uh event and uh by myself and uh, and I had people there that recognized me, and they're like, "Oh my God, what station are you on?" I haven't. Oh my God, where the hell have you been? And I'm like, "I've been under that rock I've been talking about for so long." Have you seen it? Uh, you know, <laughs> you know. But it it felt good to uh, to regenerate. And yep. uh, um, then I met um, uh, actually I met my wife when I was still on radio. She was married to another air personality, uh, who he and I are good friends uh, to this day. Uh, and uh, you know. Um, again i count my lucky stars that we had an opportunity to get together and mm -hmm. uh you and your wife got married a week before my wife and i got married and tommy dj'd our wedding i dj'd his the wedding master of the, ceremonies. the last wedding i ever did lucky son of a bitch i know i, I should have charged you double <laughs> should have but you knew where i worked <laughs> You're like wait a minute i yeah, I told yeah. Kara, I said, we'll never see a check no uh no but that was a fun damn wedding i just gotta no, throw that in there it was, it was a good time. um but, uh, you know, and, and then after that, it's like everything just fell into place and I've never been happier. Um, I, I'm getting older. My kids are great. Uh, my wife is awesome. Uh, I got a great job with some great people. I love the fact that I can talk about radio um, in my life uh, in the past yeah. with admiration, mm -hmm. frustration, um, in every emotion that you've got all wrapped up into one. It's a part of my life. It's never going to go away. I made some great friends, met you. <laughs> and what, really, what more could you ask? Exactly. For? I mean, that's the pinnacle and right I there. apologize for that in advance. Thank you. But no, there's, you know, I, and, and I'm, I'm really surprised. I've surprised myself, and, and my wife has told me this. I really thought, I, I, I never saw the end coming. You know, I, and I would joke about it throughout the last. You never and do, then, you know, and, and you and, never and, will. And that's 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 true. In but a I, world, there, he, there it is. <laughs> I was waiting for. In a world where only three people exist, and one is in radio, who makes more money? The other motherfuckers do. <laughs> and not, and I don't want to harp on it. I don't. I don't want to harp on the, the money part of it, but it sucks. Yeah. Um. I, I remember over the the last many years, and not 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 in the beginning, maybe necessarily, but but in the last ten. When we talk about, you know, what do you do? Well, I'm in radio, and and you know, it was always a joke. Like, I can't do anything else. Like, I've been doing. I mean, I was a teenager when I started in radio, 
and I'm approaching 40 now, and I have a family, and I have a wife, and I have a, a, a son uh, who will go to MIT, and eventually I can stop doing a podcast because he's going to make enough money for me. Uh, but I didn't feel the need to have a, a backup plan or a contingency plan or I have a passion for this um, because it was like, well, I, yeah, I mean, radio radios is what I do. You know, it's like what I do. And even going through three ownership changes in 20 years. In the, again, I moved into that building at, at age 19 or just, just 20 and was there until age 38. And that's a big part of your life. It's a huge part. I thought like that first afternoon, I remember coming home, like four emotions happened. Like first I thought it was a joke. Like, <laughs> where's Ashton Kutcher? <laughs> Come out like, from the screen, guys. I can't Come believe, on. like MTV is still running fucking punked. This is ridiculous. <laughs> and this fat fuck is going to fire me. This is ridiculous. <laughs> and and I, got, I remember, he, you know, my ops manager walked me to my office and he was like, you know, you know, grab whatever grab you can. Grab your shit. Grab your stuff, whatever you can, and then, you know, come pick up the rest, whatever. We'll, we'll get it figured out, whatever. I'm like, you still can't, like, like I, the, the toughest part for me to deal with was never getting a reason. Because there was no, like, hey, we need to talk about, you know, like, like months, like, leading up to it. Like, hey, we need to work on this, or this is going to be an issue, or if you could change the way. Because I would have, you know, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's tough to say. Because that, maybe that was the issue. Because I wasn't, like, the yes man. I wasn't the... I wasn't the formulation of all the other stations in our building. I wasn't Wax because I didn't give a fuck. I wasn't I-94 because I didn't give a fuck. And I wasn't all the other stations. I was like, no, we're, here's what we're going to do because what we've done has been successful. Right. And maybe that was, in, in hindsight 2020, that maybe that was the issue. Because I wasn't going to be like... You're yeah, not following their unwritten plan. Right. Like, how about we're going to do this because this is awesome and I know my audience is what it's going to work. Um, but I, I remember getting a little bit uh assholey in my office like i had a plaque that i they had sent me down to uh like these uh these seminars uh, programmers university mm-hmm. so i could learn how to program and it was great but it, it, it actually it was because i learned a lot of stuff i got to network with a lot of really great minds um but they sent me a plaque after i graduated which happened like three months prior and it was like, hey, Cooper, congratulations on completing Programmers University. You are now a certified whatever. And I was like, do you want me to keep this? <laughs> and I just looked at it. I'm like, do you want me to keep this? And he didn't say anything. So I just dropped it on my chair. And they, and over the course of like two days, I'm, I, I, I said, okay, we'll come back. Or my wife will come back. Somebody will come and... and pick up the rest of my 20 years of accumulation in a cubicle well an office and they're like no we'll have your stuff just uh we have a sponsor we'll have, that will send this stuff to you we'll have it at the front desk yeah which which took like fucking a week but whatever <laughs> that plaque did not make it back i don't no. know like, no, you're not having that motherfucker <laughs> no we spent thousands of dollars on you to be smarter and you're not <laughs> but you know my my it's I, I came home um so I went through the the haha. I went through the asshole. Um, I went through a little bit of anger. I think on on the drive home because I'm like, are you fucking are you fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. Like I gave twenty years of my literally blood, sweat, and tears to this business, this company, and I get home to my wife and I and I I cried my balls off mm-hmm. for about twenty minutes. Yeah, and then she poured some shots of whiskey. And it made it all better. <laughs> and then I realized that I am You've got a, too you, old you, to be doing shots of whiskey on a Monday afternoon. I was going to say, you realize you got a, you got an even bigger talent. Like, I was, I can, look how much I can take down. I need to stop. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, by like that Wednesday after, I was strangely comfortable with the situation. Like I was like, okay, I'm not fearful. I'm not... <clears throat> I mean, obviously, there's there's financial stuff, there's you know insurance stuff, there's all the the shit you have to deal with, like the, the adulting stuff that you're like, oh shit, now what about what about this? And man, does my schedule change? And uh, I mean, I can't sleep in because I have to take my kid to school in the morning, so that's regardless. Yeah, that's there. out. That's out. There was a not many moments where I was like, I didn't miss it. You weren't in self pity. No, no, and, and and that that's a huge testament to you and your personality. Number one, it's like because when I got fired from 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 Bob, 
Uh, I mean, I wasn't the only one. I mean, they they yeah. cleaned house. I mean, I think there's only like one or two people that survived it. And uh, but let me tell you something. I went into a deep depression. Mm. Uh, I went into a, a destructive phase where, um, you know, everyone was out to get me. Yeah. You know, and it was just sheer panic. It was absolutely sheer panic. And uh, but you know, the way that you've handled it, number one, I'm extremely impressed with number one your studio. I'm impressed with your brain. I'm impressed with your marketing. I'm impressed with the fact that you're not going to take this shit lying down. And yeah. you, you are doing something that you continue to love to do, and I admire that. Not a lot of people will do that. I didn't do it. Uh, when I was done, I was done, and I walked away from it. Uh, I did a very, very small stint in radio uh, in Pensacola when my wife and I moved there for about a year. Uh, and um, it was within a couple of weeks where I said, I don't want to do this mm. uh, because of the management ego, the the politics, the uh, I'm better than you mentality, uh, the, hey, we're not going to pay you anything because we don't really put a whole lot of worth into you. Right. You're a warm body with a voice. That's all we really need. Yeah. And I was right. You know, you know how to work the buttons. Yeah, right. Yeah. You, you know. if, if, you can't, if you don't know the system, you can probably figure it out. They hired me on as a production director, which I love doing. I love producing mm. and, and putting things together. And um, it got to the point where the sales reps would say, well, we need you to voice this. We need you to voice this. We need you to do this. We need you to produce this. And, and the operations manager came in and said, look, you got to start farming this out to other people because all f- five stations have got your voice on it. You know, we need, <laughs> we need, to, we need to work everybody else. And I said, I'm getting paid to to do these right and and there's a reason why they're coming to me to have this done and i'm not saying again that i'm god's gift to radio but i mean again it was a small market Mm -hmm. uh people that weren't being coached um and and i was just doing what i do naturally i mean i've got um 16 years um of radio uh seven of which were, were in you know top 10 top 20 market. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was coached by the best people in the business. I give all my credit to them, not me. Uh, they taught me how to do what I do. Right. Um, and it wasn't within a couple of weeks of being there. It's like, I, this is why I left. This is exactly why I left. You know, you can't be happy with what you've got. Yeah. You know, you just, you can't, you gotta, uh, Oh, there's my blood pressure again. <laughs> Have another sip. You'd be fine. Uh, PTSD, be fine. PTSD, PTSD. But there, PTSD. you know, I had, um, it was a really weird a couple of weeks ago. I had a couple of calls uh, it, with, within like hours of each other. I I developed a lot of personal relationships in uh, in the record industry, you know, because it, what I wanted to do is not do what the iHearts and the Cumuluses and the Intercoms or whatever are doing of the world. Is we developed relationships with with labels and with artists and with bands and stuff. So we there was always an open line of communication between me and any any label. So you know through that in in especially in the last five years uh, with rock radio, I developed a lot of really close relationships with some really fucking great people. <clears throat> I'll edit that out. It's fine. <clears throat> Make me. I quit smoking like fucking ten years ago. It's fine. <laughs> but um, it was a it was a weird day. So all these people that I developed relationships with uh, right after I got let go. Um, reached out to me and were, were just awesome and, you know, had the same, I, I think, shock as, as I did the first day, the first two days. So a couple of weeks ago, I'm I'm just, I'm down down here, down in the cave, and I'm working on some other stuff. I think I was doing um, some posts on a, on, a, on a podcast, and and my phone rings, and I got all these guys in my, in my phone, and I was like, oh, that's, that's weird. That's odd for him to be calling. I can't push his record right now. You know, I'm not like, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's the new one. You're like, barking like, up like, the wrong tree. Like, um, <laughs> I love it. If you want to send me like a hard copy, I, you know, throw it in my, <laughs> my CD player. It'd be awesome. I'll do that digital shit. But, um, but no, they were, they were like, Hey, um, before this goes public, so-and-so was leaving a certain position. And I was like, Oh, I, well, what happened? You know, did something happen? What's the situation? You know, cause a lot of these guys that, that he, they were mentioning, I knew, you know, from just from being in radio for so long. And they were, mo- both of them were moving on to better positions. And they're like, well, but this opening is here. Like, we like, this would be awesome for you. Like, this is, this is your thing. And I was like, hey, man, like, cool. Send me, you know, what, what do I need? You know, what, what do you, what should I do? Reach out to him directly or reach out to this person directly. I'm like, that's cool. So I get this first phone call. And less than two hours later, I get a second phone call and from a different record guy. And he's like, 
hey, what's up? I got I got some insight. And I'm like, yeah, I just heard about the. He's like, no, this is no, this is down in. So I saw there was one in Wausau, and there was one in in Fort Myers. Personally, I would have taken the one in Fort Myers. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I'm like, dude, I swear to God, if you would if this phone call would have happened like in February. When it was a shit storm of snow and like fucking sucked, and we had like Arctic blasts of sixty below wind chills. Always wanted to visit Santa. I've, I've always wanted to live there, um, <laughs> but you know, I got so I got these two calls and, and and kind of dipped my toe in the inquiry process on both of these things, and and both came back like enthusiastically. Hey man, you no, know, you know, so and so, you know, X Y Z record guy. Who talks highly of you, and I know he's like, you know, send me down your your resume, and, and I had one together. I mean, I think I did that day two. I'm like, you know, hung over as shit from day one after being fired. <laughs> Thank you, fucking Jesse James, American Outlaw Bourbon Whiskey. Um, shameless plug. <laughs> also, not paying the podcast yet, but we'll get there. Um, I really thought about it, and and I I they got back to me, and they were like, yeah, dude. I mean, you got. The attitude, you know, I mean, and these, you know, both the the companies, because that's a, would ever be a big thing for me is I, I know how I know how the radio company market is and what they're doing and and how they operate and and I I talked to my wife about it. I'm like, you know, how do you feel about moving to Wausau? And she was like, well, you know, it's at least it's close. You know, our family's around here. It's not a big deal. Can you open me another beer? Is there another beer down here? Are we all. Oh here? my god, are you kidding me? I work for a beer distributor. Hold okay. on one second. I'm getting verklempt over here. I'm not, let me I'm not, let me open up the keg. There you go. Good thing I kept the opener. Oh, by the way, uh, we gotta we gotta make room for another sponsor here, really quick. Uh, the Cooperville Podcast being brought to you in pot by the Tommy Shaw Board Game. The more you play it, the more you get bored. Another satisfied I fell customer. Asleep, yeah, fell asleep there briefly. <laughs> Thank you. I feel much better now. Good. <clears throat> but um, you know, Wasa, great. It's a it's a great community it's really close to you know our family who lives here and you know fort myers we were like yeah let's I and mean, we fucking google map that shit we're like oh sanibel island is right there and damn straight hey hey <laughs> uh, hurricanes they're like you know they're so rare these days global warming uh it's gonna be fine tampa <laughs> be fine down there captiva is just north <clears throat> by the way so we you know we really looked at both positions and again, this I wasn't actively looking for jobs. I was just, you know, this is just shit that came up month and a half after I had left. And I just, I, I don't, I don't have it. You know, like I, I don't have the drive to go and do. I don't have the drive to go and be, um, and, and, and not the radio part. I shouldn't say that. Um, I have, I would have the drive to go and do radio for the right reasons. To go and do it for the reasons that for the last five years I spent my life trying to do be impactful and make change and make radio not radio anymore and be involved in the community. And, and we had some fucking awesome listeners at the X that were just, I mean, P one is the, you know, technical term for a passionate listener of the station there. They listen, they listen from, you know, in the morning to the morning show, they listen, you know, they catch the noon show if they can and very passionate, but we had people that became our friends. I miss, I miss dealing with those individuals yeah. and and the people that that aren't that aren't that are P1s but don't, you know, come to the events, they just they listen and they're passionate and they'll they'll make their voice heard when they feel appropriate. So I would I would go back to do it for them and I would go back to do it to have some community impact. But I know how this shit works. I know how the wheel turns. I know how the uh you know they feed the rat. But like I get it and you know after a couple of inquiries, you know back and forth with a couple of the stations, you know, when you get past like the guy that you need to talk to, like talk to this, he's the guy, you know, from the record label to the, talk to this guy. And then you get to the actual guy who's doing the hiring. He's like, why don't you take this 36 question personality test? I'm like, how about you and go fuck yourself? Right. We need to make sure that you know the basic skills of life. What are your goals in five years? I'm like, I don't know, not die. I mean, what the (laughs) fuck do you want from me? Like I know what I'm, and and I actually the 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 first corporate guy that sent me an email back, I was like, hey, I was talking to so and so, and he says that you're interested interested in the job, and we got your stuff, and it's all great. But if you could fill this thing out, it'd be great, it'd be awesome. And I and he sent me like it literally thirty six questions yeah. of the do what do what is your goals, what do you think, what are you if you were in this, this situation, how would you feel? I'm like, and I sent him back in all caps, and I'm not an all caps guy. Are you fucking serious? Question mark exclamation point 
Question mark. <laughs> I haven't heard back from him. Because I don't give a fuck if I get the job. I'm like, whoa, 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 sorry. It reminds me of the movie uh, Wedding Singer when he when Adam Sandler goes into the bank and said, look, I, all I just need is a business card. Just, just give me, just, <laughs> just give me, a, whatever, just give me a business card. I don't, I don't care. Uh, you know, and it's that kind of, and, and I'm sorry, you know, and I know a lot of businesses use that short form mm. uh, to do a personality test to make sure that you're not, you know, some idiot off the street. But there is something I'm called. I'm not. I'm some idiot in a basement. Yeah. <laughs> There's a fucking difference, okay? But in my opinion, there is something called uh, professional courtesy. And it, when you've been in the business for so long, uh, you know, please, please, please give me the benefit of the doubt that I know what I'm doing. Right. It's okay if you want to scrutinize my resume. If you want to call some references, that's okay. Uh, if you want me to... Um, you know, answer some questions in a in a in a very controlled uh, interview. Great, more the, uh, absolutely. I'll be more than happy to sit down and talk Vets to you. Vet your people, people. You know, that's fine. Don't give me a fifth grade questionnaire uh, that you're going to put in a computer, and the computer is going to spit out what my personality is going to be. Right. No, I'm sorry. I can get a better personality horoscope from going to a Chinese restaurant. Okay. It's true. No, I, I cracked the cookie and I'm like, yes, sir. Yeah, that's me. I've got good things coming my way in the next month. So uh, I don't need you, you my sorry numbers son are. of a bitch. Yeah. No, I, I can see that. And, and again, that's the industry. That's the ego. I, one of my biggest pet peeves in life is ego. And I hate to say it, but when I was in Minneapolis, I, I had an ego and I had people call me out on it. And they were right. You fall into that. You fall into that. Uh, that trap that 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 grind where it's right. like hey i'm i have over a million listeners in minnesota and then look at me how great i am and you know you know honestly no one gives a shit right nobody gives a shit no you're you're only as as popular as you think you are uh and businesses are no different uh managers are no different you know right. they they're proud of where they're at and so they want to take the power they want to take the control and they want to put you down here and they're going to smash you and go well you're just the little people and and i'm the more important guy and you know what go fuck yourself right. i'm going to find a really awesome company to work for that that takes pride in their people uh and uh i'm going to be very very happy the ego thing i get because we were all there we were all at a point where it was uh you felt because you had a voice, because people recognized you, which is weird in radio, yep. because you're like, wait a minute, I'm on the radio. How do you? Oh, yeah, I, I saw you at this event. When you get to a level where that ego turns into appreciation, right? it's not stardom. It's not like, oh, my God, hey, hey, I know you're with you, and hey, here's what I feel about this artist, or here's what, you should play more of this. You appreciate the fact that somebody takes the time out of their day or however they plan their day, whether it's when they drive to work in the morning, you appreciate those people you appreciate going to the grocery store and it's not a mob necessarily but it's you know it's the guy that's like hey you know i i, I love when you do that thing at five o'clock or when you do the the work release yeah. program or when you, you know do that you know that the thing you talked about last week that's cool that's when you know that you you know those people exist because a lot of the times when you when you are when you live in a shell enough you see those people as they're the numbers. They're right. the, they're the Arbitron that comes in or Nielsen, you know, whatever. Those you are know. your hyper listeners. Those, right. That's your hyper diary right there. What you want radio to be, and I think we'll I will say wrap on this because I think we you and I are gonna have many podcasts in the future. I can <laughs> I'm gonna get a babysitter and a dog sitter and it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> yeah. You feel blessed to be able to have have done it. Yeah. You you have quirky ability to be able to speak to people and and yeah you know what part of our job was to read off of a liner card or to do a commercial but when you you're able to have some impact you're able to change some things and if you're if you're lucky enough you're able to impact lives because of what you're doing and because of what the the messages that you pass along right and it sucks there's a sucktitude to the fact. Sucktitude. I'm gonna make that a word. But, it's in Webster's hey, dictionary Webster, somewhere. Hey, Miriam, I don't care what you say. <laughs> Webster, put that shit in there. <laughs> when you are able to forget about all that, forget about the personalities that can have an impact, forget about the fact that you have these people that can be a part of people's lives and multitask at one moment or another, and when it just becomes about revenue, right, and it ignores the complete fact of change and growth and difference and when it just becomes about the next person that can say yes well we were looking for somebody who can disagree with everything th that we're doing right that is when you get to a point where you don't want to be a part of that anymore right you understand the digital revolution and what is all going to be involved with it you understand that there's a, a movement forward to you know and not just self-serving podcasting there's there's 
the Pandora's and the um, Spotify's of the world where you can find new music. And there's a generation that is completely oblivious to the fact that it exists. Right. If you if you're lucky enough to have a parent who has a car that is has a digital dashboard, you don't have that experience. Right. And you will never have it because as you grow and you have you know your iPhones or you have your speaking boxes that live in the yeah. corner over here <laughs> who turn shall, on in the middle of the night who shall remain nameless it has to find a way to evolve and the saddest part for me that radio has evolved to is that it's gone into a how can we make money on doing different things digitally right i was in a meeting at my old company they were trying to sell me on something completely different how can we geofence your area how can for your event how can we do this for you they're not selling you radio anymore. They're not selling you personality or talent or somebody that's going to come to your event and make it, you know, impactful. They're trying to sell you on technology that's already out there right. that you can get on your own, sell something that's futuristic. Right. That I could go out and get myself. What radio needs to do, find out where it used to be and what it used to be able to do and make that impact. Because I think at a local level, there's still a lot of validity to what radio can do. Absolutely. My basketball coach, we were in such a losing streak back in high school where he lined everybody up, basically canceled practice and says, guys, we're going to learn how to dribble. And we're mm -hmm. looking at him going, what? What we realized was that we weren't doing the fundamentals correctly. We weren't doing the basic things that made yeah. us successful before. The easiest things that you need to learn in basketball. Yeah. So it was the smartest thing you ever did was bring us back to the fundamentals. And I think that that's 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 wise with anything that you do professionally, personally, whatever is learn the basics either first or learn it again. Right. And refocus yourself on the things that uh, really truly matter. That's going to make you grow. Um, to this day, I, I live by that. If I, if I find myself in a, in a situation where I, I'm not where I want to be, I go back to the fundamentals. What made me better before? Right. You know, and there's, again, it's an ego check. Hey, I'm not the greatest gift to radio. I'm not the greatest gift to selling beer. I'm not the greatest gift to anything. But what I want to do is I want to be the best that I can be for myself, for my family, and everybody else. Right. If you, if you, if you forget how to grow, and I think this is a is a not only a fundamental element of, of business or of radio or of humanity, but if there's a, if you get to a point where you feel like you're at a block and you can't go any further, you can because there's there's always more to learn. There's always more to educate yourself with. And what the block becomes is somebody that's in front of you drawing that line. Like it's it's here, here's where we're drawing the line. We we can't expand this far we can't do this anymore we got to find no you need to have innovative people smart people you know in radio it comes down to you know yes you have to have you have to have an innate talent to be in radio it's not for everybody there i've and you've witnessed this and i've witnessed this in in our years of radio there's people you're like i know you have passion and i know you are driven i know you want to go and and conquer this this industry and be the best you can be but you just there's an it factor and it and it sucks to have to tell those people that they don't have it. I'm like, I'm man, yeah, you're right. You're I'm, right. You wish you could find that type of people. They're so driven. They so wanna they wanna they do every event and they wanna learn how to do production. They wanna learn how to put commercials together. They wanna learn how to do imaging and that website it's give me give me more, give me more. But if you don't have what it takes to just articulate or to talk or to this is, that was, thank you, Philo, first in, last out. You're not going to make it. What radio has done, what it's capped it at, is they found the talented people. They have them, and then they cut them off, and they say, "Nope, nope. Here's here's your here's the wall," because at that point now you're getting to a corporate level. Now you're getting to a level where it's management run radio. Yeah. You want to know who runs your radio station, people? It is not the person that is on the air. They are not taking your fucking requests. I don't care how many times yeah. you want to hear Slipknot. Sorry, sorry to burst your bubble. Ain't happening. Yeah, it's not. And you can eQuest and vQuest and text quest. I don't. Even... I will say this. I will say this. When I was at Wax Widow Four, I got into a lot of trouble for playing people's requests. I would go. Oh, yeah. I would oh, yeah, go off of. I would go off of script all the time, and I would get phone calls left and right. Why did you play this song? You messed up my computer system. Yep. Now I gotta shove this down to this hour. Don't do that anymore. It's like, you know what? I just put a smile on somebody's face. I think it's fucking worth it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you had 
10, 20, 30 other people that are like, I've never heard that song before. Exactly. I really like that. We did that with a lot of bands in rock radio. We were like exposing them to this, you know, it, they weren't on the charts. They were they were bands that came through and pounded pavement and did, you know, 50 weeks out of 52 a year on touring. And they would come and all of a sudden after a year and a half of us playing them in rotation, because nobody questioned what I did until they figured it out. Um, <laughs> all of a sudden, they're selling out these venues and stuff, and now they're getting booked at these big festivals. And we're like, "Yeah, we had a we had a piece and a part of that." Well, why they're not on the chart? I'm like, "Who gives a fuck about the fucking chart, people?" Yeah, you know, let's let come back to you know what people want. I mean, again, it flashes back to this day and age. If you want to have a band or or hear a band or find a band or listen to new music, you can find that. Yeah. If you're not a part of Discovery, you are part of the exit strategy, and it's it's a it's a sad day for radio when they don't figure that out. When right. they don't, they go, oh well, I guess um, we'll just do what iHeart did, and we do what all these other you know big corporate companies are doing, and that's just go in the way of somebody in St. Louis programming all the radio stations and hoping that you like it in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Exactly. Which is just, you know, it's not the case. This is where ego gets you. A band comes up to me at Country Jam, hands me a cassette tape says please play this play this on the air i said yep sure no problem i took the tape went back into the trailer threw it in the trash i'm like who do they think they are you know who it was heidi newfield oh trick i pony. love her so much trick pony i so, love her so hard i'm gonna end the podcast with that you know what ego is going to kick you uh, in the ass every time every I time her. so I i'm i'm when people ask me it's like tommy do you miss radio i said absolutely not well did you love radio i said absolutely you know, uh, but I'm I'm okay with where I'm at, and I I still respect the industry. Got a lot of friends that are still in it. God bless them. There's a lot of great talent out there, and I wish them and you all the luck in the world. Uh, because it does take a special someone to be in the business and to stick it out, and uh, it's a it's always going to be an uphill battle. And we will continue to fight it. You know, from whatever platform we have, and this is the platform we have. Tommy Shaw, Tommy Helmer, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> you Tommy, my honey. Maybe. You call him that if you want to. I, I remember that seems like a voice that was on your radio. Oh, it's a Friday, Granny. Oh man, that's right. I love my grandson, Tommy. Show. You know, I miss the most, Chris and Everett. That's all I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Cooperville Podcast. is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, and uh, really, if you can't find this podcast, you're doing it wrong. You can find it, Tommy. Let's have you back soon. God bless you, let's buddy. Finish these beers and put my kids to sleep.